So I have a B video that explains a little bit about some mistakes we've been making in the beekeeping. One of the big ones that we did was we left too much space in our feeding area so that they started to form some comb up there that they weren't supposed to. That was unfortunate. <laughs> and the entrance reducers we can't find. So we've got some new entrance reducers that just came in. The entrance reducers that we tried to do on there as a DIY are not working. The bees are strong enough to push them out of the way. So with these entrance reducers, we should see a much better flight pattern going in and out of the hives and keep them extra protected from any robbing bees. So the temperature right now is too cold to get in the hive and open it, but I do want to do that because I want to add a second mason jar in there on the top so that there won't be any space left. I also want to put these entrance reducers on. So I'm going to wait till it warms up a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and suit up and uh, get those things done. We've got strawberries coming up, doing really well. I don't see any peas germinating. Oh yes I do. There's one germinating right on the surface there. I will tuck that little guy under the soil so he can finish doing his job. We've got the deer fencing down because we're gonna be putting it around the kids' garden and um, reinforcing it with some T-posts. So that's super awesome. But we also wanted to have Ryan get in here with the tractor and get these beds ready for me. We prefer no-till, but when we're starting a new area, it's kind of impossible to get anything planted without making the soil workable this is not workable so ryan got super duper 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 sock and we hadn't had rain in a couple of weeks we had rain last night for the first time but we had had a dry spell so he got so stuck that he could not get out he had to go get his work truck that had towing ability to pull him out which it's a good thing he was able to borrow that truck and get out, but I'm kind of sad that there isn't all garden space ready to plant right now because that's what we were expecting for the end of that process. Sad face. Happy face. Look at all those strawberries. <laughs> oh, this just tickles me. The boys' strawberries are coming up great. Starting to see some peas germinating as well. Super stoked. These strawberries are blooming like gangbusters. We're gonna have so much fruit from fall planting. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. You see that baby strawberry? <sighs> I can't wait. There's so many of them. It's just covered with blooms and fruit forming. It's really looking good out here, y'all. I'm super, 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 super excited. The boys are just going to be in heaven this year. Y'all are not going to believe it. That beaver came back. I don't know what it came in here for, what it was trying to eat, but it's definitely been here again rip the board out that I had blocking its way and everything. The good thing is, is it doesn't look like it ate anything, which is kind of weird because why would it be in here then? Because anything that's got plants growing looks fine. And our asparagus is continuing to pop up. I'm going to go ahead and pick these today and put them in a cup of water. And by the end of the week, we should have enough for a meal. There's nothing better than eating fresh asparagus straight out of your garden, in the garden still. And I wanna do that so badly right now, but the rest of the family would like to enjoy it too. So I'm going to pick them and put them in a cup and put them in the fridge with some water in the cup so they stay crisp and fresh like they're newly picked. And in the first couple of weeks of 
them popping out of the ground. We sure, we're sure to have enough for the whole family soon. Hey, little guy. Are you protecting my garden from bad bugs? We appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Toad. So I saw these bad boys popped up yesterday. These are the first potatoes to rise above the soil. Funny thing is, is they just so happen to be the store-bought spuds. The same variety was planted in here, but these were seed potatoes and they have not come up yet. But the purple fingerlings have started to come up. You see the purple foliage? Isn't that amazing? I didn't know it was going to have purple foliage, so I'm super stoked about that. That's really cool. You may notice a theme here in our vegetables this year is there's going to be a lot of plants that are producing purple or black fruit and the, oftentimes they will have a purple foliage too if they're a plant that's high in anthocyanins. The reason why we're planting so many of these darker fruits is because of the anthocyanins. We want that extra nutritional level. We have a healing garden, a rainbow healing garden for health but we also are focused on a few extra of the darker toned vegetables to make sure that we're getting lots of extra health benefits from this garden. As you can see, despite not my neglect of my mealworm colony, it is quite healthy and full of life. We have worms, we have beetles, we have larvae. All the stages are here and doing just fine, even though they've been in the cold barn all winter. But they're waking up now because it got hot in Georgia. So now we have to start feeding them more regularly. On warm days, I would sprinkle some quail food in here just to make sure they had something, but as you can see, there's quite a few worms in here that need a lot more food than that. So I'm gonna top it off with a bunch of oats and some apple slices and broccoli stems. my little mealworms, or as I like to call them, mealy worms. No point in putting these in the compost when I can give it to my little friends. Gotta love having little boys take a few bites of their apple and then leave it on the counter to turn brown and then refuse to eat it. So we turn that into food for our mealworm colony so they're gonna get to eat and enjoy the moisture and the sugars from the vegetables and fruit and the nutrition that they get from the oats you can also use bran but this is just what we have on hand I like to do what's easiest and this has been super easy for us you may have heard that quail crow in the background. I thought these were all females, but I think we have a boy in here. Which one is it? So these eggs have been laid this week from this batch alone. So, hmm, who could it be? Sweet little quail. So this makes me want to throw these in the incubator. Hmm. I wanted more than that though, so I'm going to wait until the other hens start laying again. They're going through a molt, and then we'll incubate some more. I just have to say though, this tractor, or not tractor, I'm so used to chickens. Look at the size of those. I think those are double yokers. They were laid back to back too. This is the normal quail egg size. <laughs> Half the size. <laughs> Two quail eggs to equal one of those. So. These guys have been very productive. I'm having to borrow Ryan's bee suit shirt today because mine is damaged and is no longer safe to use. We found that out the hard way. 
learning from our mistakes though and I've got a new suit for me on my wish list and I will just wear his until I get something new. I'm going to go ahead and put these entrance reducers on and probably feed some. We may have it all Up the ladder, down the wall Different mysteries Full life mixed with tea Well, maybe I won't be putting it on. It doesn't seem to fit. I might have to get Ryan to shave down some. We are happy most of the time and we get along better than fine Left and right we pray right, Through the ups and downs we sway It's easy Either way take them a few minutes to figure out that the entrance has been reduced. It's going to make them kind of mad at first, but it's for their safety so they won't be robbed. So I'm going to try this side again. There's so many more bees on this side. I think that's part of why I'm not doing well because it makes me more nervous that I'm going to smoosh someone. just not a good fit. Alright. I don't want to make him angry, so I'm going to have Ryan shave down the end of this one. I'm just going to put our temporary one back in its place, even though they're just going to knock it down again. like there's anything left in the other court even though we just put it in there there's a lot of nectar coming in their legs are just covered in pollen let's see if I can show you guys up close see now I got my suit on I can be a little closer
See how much pollen is on the back legs when they come in? A lot of yellow and orange. Healthy, healthy hives, that's for sure. These guys are a little bit more in the sun. Maybe you'll see it better. Beautiful. It makes me feel really happy about having so much pollen available for them. Our property is very abundant in multiple species of pollen rich and nectar rich sources for them. This is one of the best places these bees could have end up, for real. This is a good home for them. And it's only gonna get better with all our flowers and vegetables in the garden. As the season progresses, they're gonna have so many options. They're beautiful. I am loving my bees even if I'm making a few mistakes along the way. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.